to stay with a company, it's because, well, one, it's given me so much. So I have like, and I, I'm excited to have this obligation. Maybe it's not an obligation. It's just more that I just want to give back to the company. When I customers ask me, what am I going to do for the next, like, where I see myself in the next 10, 15, 20 years, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be here with you guys. Um, just know that within the next few years, I'm going to be, I'm going to make, my mission is to make a million dollars and explain to them my business plan as to how to go ahead and make a million dollars with the people I'm connecting myself with and everything. And they're like, whoa, yeah. And then recently the conversations also be going. And then like, and also, and I'm also getting right now, I'm about to graduate. I'm getting degrees in physics and math. And, um, and I'm getting my PhD. So at that point, after I say like my, my business plan to them real quickly, I'm like, so yeah, you're stuck with me, whether you like it or not. Customer. Yeah. I tell my customers, you're stuck with me, whether you like it or not. <laughs> And they laugh because they, they want that, right? I mean, people want to spend thousands of dollars on Cutco. They're not going to want to spend thousands of dollars on Cutco or it's more than 10 grand with somebody who's going to be there only for like a few months, a year, two years, and it's not going to be able to take care of them in the long run. So I provide that vision for them with my business plan to know that you guys, that's why I tell them, even though jokingly, but seriously at the same time, whether you like it or not, you're stuck with me. I'm the one that's going to be taking care of you in one way or other. So that's one key point that I make for all my customers. Um, I never really go this route unless they like, unless I feel it's totally appropriate, but you don't necessarily do this on a demo at all, actually. But I do sometimes dive in with the uh, other vision as to why I'm getting my degrees in physics and math. And it's so I can go ahead and get myself the experience I need to start a quantum computing company. So it's a tech company in computers. It's a new type of computer. Um, and that's why I'm going for a PhD in applied physics. I recently got my first publication ever. Um, in the field of quantum gravity, published in the uh, international journal, physics journal called Physics Essays. Bitches, I'm a real physicist now. Um, and uh, I'm getting ready for grad school. And with that being said, the reason I'm going to grad school is just so I can have access to quantum computing laboratories in these top-notch universities so I can learn what I can to start this quantum computing company on my own and close that knowledge gap and get it going. Cutco. Can we go a little deeper the, before we move on to the Cutco? What what's this uh, million dollar plan for the? Can we? Yeah. Um, before we move into the Cutco stuff, what's your plan for making a million dollars in the next couple of years? So over here um, in Cutco, so I've been talking to interior designers and some home builders, and um, I've been building a relationship with them. And maybe you have already heard this, but with my clientele over here. I talked to them about how I want to go ahead and have a complete cut. So I sold the four complete cutco kitchens, nothing free so far in the past year two this year so far. And then two or towards the end of last year where it's everything in the catalog, the complete cookware, flatware, ultimate set with steak knives, um, all the accessories and then everything Two well wellness mats, barbecue set, um, the, uh, six piece kitchen tool set, wine opener, counter, you get the idea, everything in the catalog kitchen related. Boom. They just accept the hunting and the garden tools. But one of those complete Cutco kitchens also bought hunting knives and bought two garden tools, nothing free. One of my other complete Cutco kitchens not only got a complete Cutco kitchen, but they also got another ultimate block filled with all of the other knives that we make. Santoku style everything, Santoku style straight edge, gourmet prep knife with a straight edge, gourmet prep knife with a double D edge, and then everything in another ultimate block. So bottom line is that Working with uh, home builders, they build a home. They want to go ahead and market themselves. We already do something like this as a realtor program. They want to go ahead and market themselves. One of the best ways for a home builder or for a project manager who's working with a bunch of home builders working to get the ratings of their home as high as possible to increase their pay or interior designers that are focused in the kitchen with an aesthetic appeal is that by filling a, com a, a home with a complete Cutco kitchen, with either A, just as a job result, or B, with their logo on it, they have forever marketing for free with a badass quality, with a badass service where I can go in and service their clientele over the years to not only reflect Cutco's uh, amazing service, but also what their home builder or their interior designer provided for them. So it's building that relationship with interior designers and home builders where for every home they build, they put a complete Cutco kitchen in it. And me and a couple of friends of mine have been building relationships with home builders and we've gotten their feedback that, Hey, let's go ahead and do it. Like that's something they want to go ahead and do. 
So we've been planting the seeds and we just really started taking into going into it this summer, planting the seeds with our home builders. We're like, Hey, what do you think about this idea? They're excited. And they're like, Hey, go ahead and enjoy what you got now as a Cutco product and we'll follow up soon. So that being said, that's where I'm going. So let's talk about some of these Cutco kitchens you closed. Um, what was, what was your first Cutco kitchen and how did that happen? Who connected you to that customer? What was that sale like? And who has that customer connected you to since? Okay. So that customer, it was, I don't remember who referred me to the person who referred me to her, but I do remember it was a lady who was working for over here with Lido as a contracting company for NASA space station. They had just been fired. Everybody had just been fired. And she was in a few. All their pay cuts were, were uh, they, they all took a pay cut, a major pay cut. I think she was telling me she was making below 70, maybe 60 grand. It, it was a major pay cut for their company. So she bought like a table knife, maybe two from me, I think. She gave me three or four rolls. One of those was Margaret Klee, who also works in the same company, same story. I remember I was just making calls. It was one summer. It was a week before SE2. And I'm building momentum. And I call Margaret Klee. And I go through my regular phone approach and she tells me she doesn't have a job. She's broke. She doesn't cook. And that she just got out of a hospital right now that it's that she like, and then I was like, that's totally fine. I'm just more than happy to come by, give you the best time of your life. Do something quick. If you see anything you like, you can totally get it. Of course. I ultimately, I'd really just love you to introduce me to more people. And the best part about it, I'll make it super fast and I'm only going to make your day anyway. So can I come by tomorrow at 6.15 or 8.15? Something along the lines of that. She gave me the objections that everybody would just immediately say, no, I'm not going to go do that. Then. Where were you at in career sales at the time? I was under, so this is last year. So subtract a hundred. I was probably like at 325, maybe early 300 K. And, and then what was going through your mind as you were, uh, getting those objections did you doubt it did you question whether or not you i didn't it? doubt it i at this point in my career i'm just like look if they fucking say yes to a demo i know i'm gonna fucking sell i have a 90 percent closing ratio even if they fucking said the worst shit on the fucking phone i'm gonna sell to them they're gonna buy for me it's very rare and if they don't buy for me they're gonna give me fucking badass referrals that i'm gonna sell a lot to as well that's why when i go ahead and ask for referrals Every time I finish my recommendation approach, I finish it with this line. Don't judge your friends and family. Trailer homes, millionaire homes, it's all the same. I sell a shit ton or I sell a lot. Whatever connection I have with the customer. I like to try to say shit to make it more real for them. Um, so going back to the story, did, did, did that answer that, Jenna Max? Yeah, definitely. So... I scheduled that demo. It's like 2, 12, 15 in the afternoon somewhere. It's a decent looking home, one story, nothing crazy. I go in through the back. I put my gum in the recycling trash bin that she has right there. I open the door. Well, I'm all happy. I have my suitcase. I'm rolling up in my bag and everything. I'm going in. I open up the door and it's this overweight lady sitting down on a chair looking at me with a bunch of dogs barking behind her. And she's like, hey, that's a recycling bin. Don't throw your gum in there. And I'm like, oh, wow, great first impression. So I just grab the gum, and then I don't know what the hell I do with it. Um, and I go and I step inside her home, and I ask, the first things I ask, can I take, do you need me to take out my shoes? I mean, I, I understand if you don't or whatever. No, you're fine. I go in, and I look down at this, and I'm being very crude here because it's important. I'm looking down at this overweight lady who's sitting down with bunches of do dogs barking around. It smells like dog. I'm looking down. And I literally, I swear to God, I, in my head, I remember this exact decision. I told myself, I, have a I can make a choice right now, Pancho, because that's what I call myself, um, especially all my customers. I, gotta, I can make a choice right now, Pancho. And I choose to give this lady the best presentation I have ever done. I said those words exactly in my head as I was staring at her, preparing to judge the fuck out of this lady. But I didn't. I do exactly that. I sit down with her. I give her my full high energy bunch of blast. And I'm like going in there. I flip the, I do the demo. I grab the shears. I'm like, this all comes in your kitchen. I'm like, Oh cool. I haven't even shown her the kitchen yet. I'm already prefacing it from the beginning. I'm just having fun like my normal self. 
I flipped the page from the fair guarantee. Like this is the whole, this is the complete Cutco kitchen I've been talking about. All of it is twelve thousand dollars. There's two thousand dollars of discount. It goes down to ten thousand. And the best part about it is they can be done in payments. And she was like, "How much is it again?" I'm like, "It's ten thousand." She's like, "I can't afford that." I'm like, "That's totally fine. That's why we have the sets." And then you guys know the normal pitch. I'm sure you've heard it from Taylor Max. So we have three sets. We have the little basic set. You know, that's basic. And then we have the complete set. I like my finger, touch this whole complete set picture, and then I make the sizzling sound. We all do this, right? And then we have something in between the two called the family. Boom. I'm showing her the complete set pieces. I'm having a blast. I'm like, hey, like, so the first thing I really show her is as I look for a problem to solve in her life. The first thing she does is like, these are the super shears. I cut a penny. I did this in the beginning of the demo. But uh, so like at this point, she's like, hey, can I cut my dog food? So she has like these hard ass bars for her dog food. I'm like, let's give it a try. If we can't, we'll just find a knife to figure out how to do it. So we try with the scissors. It does an okay job. This dog food was really intense. We try the cleaver. It was a little bit crazy. We get the hardy slicer. Boom. We solved it. We're able to saw it down with the hardy slicer. The double D edge gives that dog food a nice grind. She was happy. I solved the problem. Hey, can I go get an apple? Do you have an apple I can go ahead and have a cut, cut with it real quickly? Um, you can check my fridge. Okay, so I jump over a doggy gate. I go into her fridge door. Overweight lady stays in the same spot the entire demo. I grab the apple. I go back with all excitement. But check this out. I grab the trimmer, slice it up, grab the cheese knife. Boom. I know. That's therapy in a knife. And every single one of them for the rest of your life. And they get better from that. So we're having a good time. And I, I only show her a few pieces. Yeah, pause real quick because there's a lot here. And I just took some notes because, I mean, there are just so many goods right there. Do a demo with anyone, no matter what, and have confidence in your skills. And if your skills aren't good enough that you're confident sitting down with anybody that you're going to close something, that means you need to be spending, you know, 15, 20 minutes a day working on your skill set. 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night. Like, this is how the top people feel when they sit down with a client. They know what they're going to close. They know that they can close and they have that skill set. So if you don't have that confidence yet, then think about, you know, what are the things I can do to, to start elevating my business to a point where I'm comfortable sitting down with someone like this and closing something big because I just, I have that much confidence in my skill set. Uh, you had no doubt. At, I mean, and you could just hear that in your voice. You didn't hesitate at all when I asked you that question. And I'm sure you've been through that kind of process multiple times and you decided you were going to give your best no matter what. And I can tell you many appointments that I walked in in that same way where, you know, I was not excited about the appointment for whatever reason and just mentally had to click into that space where no matter what happens, I'm going to give this lady my best and I'm going to create the most I can out of this appointment. The sound effects. Love the sound effects. That's an Andy Jaunty special. <laughs> was I doing sound effects? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, a, that's an Andy Jaunty thing. That's not an everybody thing. All right. I know that you've learned your whole business from him. I've been exposed to a lot, and that is not a, a, a standard program that's taught in training. All right, that's definitely an Andy Jaunty special. But adding in some sound effects, this Miss Jones, that's the complete set. Yeah, those sound effects—they they do the business for you, man. It's great. Um, yeah. Finding a problem to solve and solving it right there at the house with the dog food and the scissors—that was great. Um, and then the cheese knife and an apple. I feel like that's something a lot of people don't know. The cheese knife cuts an apple like ridiculously. If you're on a service call, have them cut an apple with the trimmer and then cut an apple with the cheese knife and they'll freak out. Same thing with a potato. But I also want to point out that cutting food is something that the top people do on demos, you know, making the effort, asking, can I grab an apple, getting all excited, jumping into the kitchen and rummaging through the fridge to find what you can do to cut. I think that's all really big. So there's a lot of good nuggets there. Continue with the story, Francisco. I think we're ready to move on. Okay, so uh, I got to the point where, so at this point, I just, I, I just pu pulled out a few pieces in the complete set, maybe not more than five, and I was like, you get it, right? The complete set solves all your problems for the rest of your life. Yeah, I get it. Okay, next page. Here's a flatware, 1810 stain. I get my five-second uh, pitch on it, flip, gadgets, flip. Wait, wait, wait. You only showed five knives from the ultimate set? Yeah. Which were those five knives? And are they the same five knives every time? No, I, I pull out the knives. Remember, my mission is to like show them exactly what knives solve the problems. And I just tell her like, look, they all get better from here. Do you see how this all solves? Like, you see how the complete set solves everybody and anybody's problems? Do you get that? 
And what if they say no at that point? then I go ahead and explain it more. I haven't had that ever happen, um, but then I'll go ahead and explain it more till I make sure I solve their problems to the complete set. Cool. So you show her the flatware? Yeah. So um, now, obviously, to be able to do that, I read a lot of Cutco reviews online for salmon knives, for cleavers, for hardy slicers, for the ultimate set, for the homemaker. I read a lot of reviews on Cutco.com so I can hear real customer uh, feedback as to what they use it for what problems they have with them, sets, knives, cooker, whatever it is, and like how I can, and how, and like even in the reviews, you'll see other customers solving other customers' problems with Cutco. I learn a lot from there, and I read that a lot. Um, just to preface what you're doing, because I'm pretty much done with this story. You're about to get to the grand finale, which we all know. Um, another thing I really do is, earlier you said about 15 minutes of practice, so I'm really obsessive, but then at the end of the day, we're just doing our job. I literally do go ahead and go through my complete set approach. Like just, I just come up with a random scenario. And then I just start talking to myself in the mirror as if like I'm handling this situation, doing the silly things that I do, coming up with ingenious little clever things I would say in the demo. And then I'm like, that's good. And then I would just go ahead and pretty much do a demo and close like a badass with myself with the mirror. I do do that every other night. It's really fun. And thank you for bringing that up because that's something I should be doing a lot more. Practice builds forever. <laughs> um, so that being said, the grand finale, I flipped the flat where it's beautiful. It's like, yes, you don't have to worry about it. Flip to the gadgets, the most expensive things. Look how amazing I do the ice cream scoop demo where I just put a piece of ice and melts insanely fast. Mind blown. Cookware, waterless cookware. It's amazing. You can boil fruits and veggies without adding any water. And then you guys know the cookware spiel. And then, and then mats. And all of this comes in the kitchen, in the complete Cutco kitchen. It does? Yeah. So then I finished the demo. Hey, and I go back to the sets. And then I was like, hey, so I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you. Do you want to go ahead and get the basic? The family. Or the complete set with a Cutco poncho for life. That's me. And she, she was like, Pancho, I'm not sure. I'm think she was thinking, thinking, thinking. And then she was like, I'm not sure if I want to get, if I want to get the complete set, but I'm thinking I should get the signature so I can add the flatware on the side. And I'm like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That's totally fine. I'm, I'm on her side. I'm agreeing. I'm on her side. I'm understanding, right? And then she was like, um, well, this is how much it would be. This is how much of a discount you get, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, not a discount. Like, so this is how much it would be. I would just add them together. And then she was like, how much was the kitchen again? And we go back to the kitchen. And then we go back to the set. Then she goes back to the kitchen. I want the kitchen. Give me the kitchen. This is my first kitchen set, so, but I'm, print, I'm playing it cool, right? Like, I want the kitchen. Okay, cool. What handle do you, what color block do you want? Cherry, honey, cherry. What handle knives color do you want? Classic brown or pearl white? Pearl white. Awesome. And, um, Sweet. Do you like, uh, do you want to go ahead and do it in debit or credit? It's like, she's like, uh, she's like debit. Cool. That's what most of my customers do. Um, with the kitchen. And when I was writing up the order. I was like, here, let me give you the exact price on it. And she got the complete cuckoo kitchen and she gave me 10 referrals and I had never been so fucking excited in my life up to that point. <laughs> I bet. So how did those referrals work out for you? Um, so I didn't have her set. So this is the importance of the text message. I did not have her send out a text to them because I was really in a rush and I was going to my next demo. I should have taken the extra two minutes to go ahead and make sure she sent out the text or even have send out the text for her. Sometimes what I do with my customers when they write over 30 referrals, I have them give me their phone. I was like, Hey, look, I know you're busy. This usually never works at the late night demos because, you know, it's past 10 o'clock or whatever. But during the day demos, I'm like, hey, you're busy. Let me just go ahead and send out this heads up text message for you so you don't have to do the work later. I know you're busy. And most of the time, they let me do it. All I'm saying is I should have done a heads up text message with her and followed through with that like a boss. Um, because I her friends were all busy and um, I barely scheduled any of her referrals. To this day, I still have a damn referral list with barely anybody answering. Um, so anyway, I hope that was valuable. That was great. That was very, very valuable. Uh, who was your favorite customer? 
My favorite customer was my customer, Dennis and Shanna, who they bought an ultimate set with steak knives with me from me two years ago. And as soon as I sold the ultimate to the wife, the husband busts out, ha, sucker, <laughs> to the wife. And I bust my ass laughing. And, I, and then, you know, I preface the whole thing. Hey, guys, like, and over the years, when I come by and sharpen your knives, we'll get everything else in the kitchen, blah, 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 blah. A year later, I take my friend Alex Chavez, who just broke half a million yesterday as well. Um, he goes field training with me on this demo, on the service call for my past customer, Dennis and Shanna. We go in there, and this is why they're my favorite customers. Because Alex saw me, and I never realized I did the things that I do. Alex saw me go in that demo. I cooked dinner for them, right? And then um, we close in the cookware. I made a wish list after that. This is what I do with my past customers. The wish list and the flatware was on there and some other stuff. And I probably closed like at least five to ten times on the freaking flatware and cookware, either just re-explaining why it's a great investment for them and or making a better deal for them. The last three two to three times I closed, it was just repeating how much she's saving over the long run of life and why it's valuable now for her home. I repeated it like three, four times. And like, and then what I did is like, oh, and look, just, and the biggest thing was that she had payment issues. A lot of the times, guys, it's never about the money when they're buying Cutco, like 95% of the time. She wanted to say no because she thought like, it was like $700 payments for the flatware and the cookware. She was getting like the, the middle flat cookware, I think, and then the flatware. And at the end of it, I pretty much was like, hey, look, what about this? And I didn't know if I could do it. Why don't we just go ahead and push back the second payment one month along with all the other payments so you have two months between this first payment now so you have plenty of time to make sure everything's ready with your new house. Okay, let's do it. I solved that problem in her head. I called field service. I had to like just go back and forth with accounting um, like four or five times till they finally caved and let me push back that payment because they're not going to let you do this. Not easily. They finally caved and we agreed that, hey, the second payment was just going to be $20 because Cutco Field Service only needs a little bit of a payment in order to push back the rest. So the next payment was $20 and the remaining ones were around 700 bucks just around that. Boom. She's, I upgraded. So my friend Alex on this field training demo saw me upgrade my, custom, my past customer with an ultimate set of steak knives to a Cutco kitchen. And they got mats as well. So what and was so that? So. Did you close on that flatware like ten times? So that's my favorite customer. Why? Because, huh? So you said you closed on the flatware like ten times. What I closed on now? the cookware and the flatware together. All her wish list ten times. Oh, so what was that process like? You close. You show her the prices. She says no. So I do a push pull. Um, I don't know if I did a push pull. Sometimes I don't do a push pull. More today I'm doing a push pull. But back then, what I did was uh, I added everything up the cookware and the flatware. And then she had like a, a couple accessories she wanted. Oh, so she got a basic cookware set and the flatware. And um, she had a couple things on the wish list that was like the, the uh, double boiler and like something else. I forgot what it was. I close on everything. Close one. You can just go ahead and get this, right? And then she's like, they're like thinking about it. That's too much money, Poncho. Um, I don't know if we can do this. That's totally fine. Then here, how about this? Let me go ahead and make it more special for you. Drop down, give up two free stuff, explain how much more she's saving now rather than later. She was probably getting like an additional 150 bucks, right? Maybe 200 bucks. Did you take things off of the wish list? Or no, just lower I just bonus, I bonus the items on the wish list for free. It was like two, maybe three things on there. That's not cookware or flatware. So you show her the price. She says no. And the price was full price up front, right? Nothing for yeah. free. And then you said, well, hey, what if I can give you a little bit of a better deal? You lowered the price. You asked again. Right. Uh, uh, but the way I build it up is like, okay, let me go ahead and get you like, okay, then let me hook you up with the best deal ever from like my favorite customers, Dennis and Shanna. You know, just being silly. Like, okay, Poncho. I'm like, just, just check it out. And then you can kick me out. I swear. I go, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm writing down the price. Dude, this is insane. Like, <laughs> Oh my God. Just check this out. Shanna, you're going to love me for this. Okay. For, for the rest of your life. I know you already love me. <laughs> Just check it out. I build it up. I give it to her. You know, it's cookware, flatware. And then I'm giving like the double boiler and like whatever else on it. For, it's like two things for free. Not, not going to lie. It wasn't that much. No, I was just one thing for free. I'm sorry. I gave one thing for free. She said, no, 
I drop down by giving her the other little thing for free as well. So it's probably like three or four closes right there. Then five to the fifth time, it's like, all right, well, then what about this? Why don't you just go ahead and take advantage of, and then at this point, I'm just closing on value. It's a value close. We're like, hey, you remember how you're loving these set of knives? You know how you're getting a new home? You can't have a new badass home, a new beautiful home with shit cookware and flatware that doesn't look good with your home, Shanna. It has to look really good. You need to get this for your home. And the payments are only seven twenty. Like, and the payments make it super easy. I'm like, and you're getting two, and then I and I rebuild value in Cutco, and you're getting the the um the double boiler free at saving you seventy two dollars additional now. You're getting this thing for free at saving you another hundred dollars now. That's at taxes. That's two hundred bucks plus the set discounts and everything. That's seven hundred and one from the flatware. That's four hundred thirty nine from the cookware. That's almost fifteen hundred dollars worth of stuff you're saving now with Ancho Special added onto it, and you're saving something, you're making something beautiful happen for your home. You gotta get it, Shanna. Dennis, what do you think, my man? What are you thinking? It's like, support it, Pancho. You just gotta convince a wife. All right, we have your husband on board. Shanna, we can do this together. I got you. She's like going back and forth. Oh, man. Um, Pancho, I'm like, like, Dennis, didn't she, doesn't she love this kind of stuff for her home? How much have you guys already spent building your home? $90,000? Shanna, is $3,000 more going to kill you? No, it's not. If your car costed $2,000 more, would you still buy that car? Yes. Shanna, I'll take care of you. You know that the food's going to come out delicious. You know that your feet is going to feel amazing for your family. You know that everybody's going to enjoy it when they walk into your home. You're getting, a, you're saving the boiler. You're saving the whatever other item, for free. Like, I'm hooking it up for you so I can save you the money and make sure. And we're talking, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, right? Funny, in a funny, I'm using humor towards my advantage. This is the point of this. Because in the process of closing multiple times like that, people tend to go ahead and give you an objection that's the true one. We finally got to the true objection. She didn't say it was an objection. She just said it on the side, like in a side note. Pancho, like, like the next payment is like the payments are really intense. Like I have to go ahead and make sure I make I follow through with this other thousand dollar payment for the home. I'm like, okay, so the first payment you can afford, then that's when I offer the solution. Well, what if we just push back the next payment, Shanna? And then and then value close again. You get the 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 boiler for free, the, the double boiler for free. You get and I'm hooking it up with this as a as a gift for me to you, so you can go ahead and enjoy something with the best deal ever. You save X amount. The payments are 742, and it's just instead of having one month between the next payment, you have two months. That'll give you plenty of time to make sure you're situated. So you at least get something now, and you get a cut co poncho times 10, because one wasn't already enough. <laughs> and that's me. And they laugh. All right, I'll get it. Close. So it's a val it was a it was a better deal close, and it was a value close. Sometimes it was just straight value close, sometimes it was just a better deal close. At the, I, I bring in the husband. I have him like on board. I bring in as much energy from every source that I can to help her support in this decision. I love it. And I mean, I hope you guys are like just picking up on this guy's energy. Like, oh my gosh, no wonder he sells so many knives. And I, he's saying a lot of things that I know we discuss and that I know you guys know are things you should be doing, but I'm, would really question whether or not you are. So here's a couple things that I wrote down, reading the Cutco reviews. Um, that's a, a little light bulb there, learning your names and uses for sure. Practicing your demo in the mirror. That's something I did for years and probably could still do. Um, yeah. Ask every uh, time, ask multiple times for the order. Be creative, solve problems. That's what we do. We are creative problem solvers. You have to find the problem and offer the solution. Use their name. I don't think you guys, I don't know if you even noticed, but Francisco does this just naturally. How many times did he use their names in just telling the story? Imagine when he's at the house. People's names are their favorite words. It blows my mind. I know for a fact some of you have gotten to the close and go to write up the order form, and you realize, oh, I don't even know their name. And you had to ask their name for the order. Like that's, that, that, that shows you there's some big room for growth there. Uh, so oh. use your name a lot. <clears throat> Closing on looks, all right? You'd be shocked how many times people will place an order just because of how pretty that ultimate set looks, right? Comparing it to the rest of their home, Michonne's, you have this gorgeous home, you just bought this new stuff, and you have this, 
for knives. You have this for coat. It doesn't match. I love that analogy. If your car was an extra $2,000, would you not get it because of that? Of course not. And then just reaffirming the value, trust, giving them that confidence to say yes. And your confidence, like how strong is Francisco's confidence right there? He has no doubt that this customer is going to love everything that they have, that they can afford it, and that they should do it today, now. And that energy is so just attractive. And I mean, it gives the customers the confidence to go ahead and do it. Um, and rebuilding that value when you close, dropping down nice and slow, and uh, just asking for the order multiple times so you get down to the real objection. So we got about five minutes left. You got the five minutes, Francisco? You got to get running? Yeah. Good. I can go ahead. I, I can actually conclude. That's perfect. All right. Um, so I had a bunch of other questions that I haven't even had a chance to, to go through. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no this, was, this was phenomenal. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. I wrote these questions hoping we didn't get to any of them because the conversation was just so good. Can I add something real quickly, though? No. <laughs> yes, of course you can. Go for it. Um, whenever you're closing big, it's very important to satisfy all sources of influence. Because if they have a source that's negged out, they're probably going to get forced to cancel the question, but even to cancel the order. But it, what I've noticed is even if they're uncertain, but everybody around them is very positive in their, in this person's decision, if you've achieved that, then you have a good shot of that working out anyway. And as long as you made sure that you took care of the customer in the process. Whenever the sources of influence aren't taken care of and there's still uncertainty in the woman or in the, in the husband or whomever, it doesn't matter whomever you're closing with, then you can expect that order to cancel. If you're not close, if you're not satisfying all sources of influence, then either there's, there's two philosophies. B, you can drop down, show something smaller that they're more comfortable with, or you just need to get better at your fucking job to provide more value for them and what they're getting. And I'm more of the B kind of guy, but most people will tell me drop down, which I've done the route and it works dude. But there's also, that just goes to show how much better you need to improve your skills of providing value and solving their answers. Because when people really want something, they'll lose an arm and leg for it when they find a value. 